Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to be answering some of the questions that I've had throughout April, largely on potting on your little seedlings and watering in the greenhouse. So we're going to be having a look at that today. And I've got lots and lots of seedlings that need to be sorted out because I got really busy last week with a couple of weddings that I had and the growing went by the wayside. So this week, lots of catching up to do and lots that I can show you to, to discuss some of the answers to the questions that you had. So this week I'm trying to get back on top of things again. The greenhouse is absolutely bursting at the seams now with plants. So they are all over the floor as well as on the staging and the table and I'm starting to run out of room. So I'm hoping that the weather starts warming up a little bit because we had a fantastic sunny week last week where it was really, really warm, beautiful blue skies every day. And this week we've gone back to being really chilly and frost overnight. It was minus one waking up this morning. So I'm glad that I went and fleeced everything in the garden again. I really need to start hardening all of these plants off, a lot of them that have been potted on and are growing away quite happily. So I have got a whole heap outside hardening off today and I'll get out next week when it's hopefully slightly warmer. And I need to get a lot more out there in the next batch hardening off next week. And then that'll allow me to get more little seedlings from my side conservatory into here. So it's just a continual process of getting things into the ground outside at the moment, getting things out the greenhouse and hardening off, getting the seedlings out from the side conservatory and into here, and then sowing more seeds so that you get flowers later in the season. So what kind of things went by the wayside last week when I wasn't growing? Well, I have had a lot of things that have grown really well in my 82 cell trays, but are now getting too big for that. But they're not quite at the stage of being ready to plant out. So I need to pot them on one more time. So I got a really good question recently, which was how many times do I pot my little seedlings on? And this is from the stage of sowing the seeds in their seed trays getting them into that 82 cell tray or a little two centimeter pots and then do I just keep them at that stage and then plant them out or do I pot them on again? And the answer is that I pot them on again here in Scotland. You might not need to if you were down in the south of England or in a different part of the world where it was warmer and you could get them out quickly. But for me, they just need that little extra time in the greenhouse and then hardening off before I get them outside. And they are too big in the 82 cell trays now. They need to be potted on. So we're gonna have a look at that just now and I can show you you how I know that they need potted on again and what I'm going to pot them on into. So also today I am going to be potting on some of my little seedlings that germinated fairly recently in their seed trays. So you're going to see the two different stages of potting on that I do. And we're also going to talk a little bit about watering as well in the greenhouse because that was another question that I had recently about how do I water all these seedlings in the greenhouse? What techniques do I use? So let's get started with some potting on. So this is where everything starts in. So this is the seed trays I sow my seeds into and then we get some little seedlings when they get to this stage. You can see here lots of lovely scabious has germinated there and then at the other end I've got some docus as well and I've labelled them clearly so that I know which is which. And when they get to this stage where they've got their true leaves and they're starting to grow away, I will then pot them on for the first time and they will get potted on into either an 82 cell tray like this. You can get smaller sized ones, so you don't need to use one quite this big if you don't have as many seedlings. Or I will pot them into these, which are little two centimeter pots. So they're a great starting point because you don't want to pot those little tiny baby seedlings into something too big. Um, you don't need to, they're not that large at that stage and they don't need that much room. So a good starting point, a cell tray of any size that suits you, or little two centimetre pots. And then, once they have been growing away for a few weeks, they then start to get rather large. So this is the 82 cell tree and I've got some cornflowers in here, I've got some larkspur, I've got some saponaria in here. So this here is a tray of gypsophila and it's growing away really nicely. And underneath, you should be able to see there that there are some roots starting to come through at the bottom. So seeing those roots coming out through the bottom, I know that that's a good stage for getting them potted on into larger pots. So we'll be doing that today. So when we start off our potting on of the seedlings that have already been in the greenhouse in these 82 cell trays, 
I use a potting on compost or a multi-purpose compost, either is fine. At this stage, it doesn't need to be seed cutting compost because they're quite well established little plants and it doesn't matter as much if there's slightly larger um, textures in there in the compost. When it's sowing seeds, you want a really fine texture so that the seeds are able to germinate really easily and get up through the soil. But when you're putting on slightly larger plants, you can use a multi-purpose compost and you'll find that they vary between different brands as to how much different textures you have in them. You might find small pebbles or little bits of twigs and things in them, but that should be okay. You can just remove the really large ones. And I've got my pots here, so we're gonna get started. And I've also got my watering can as well to give them a water in once I've transplanted them. So we're gonna use the gypsophila today. That's what we're gonna transplant first into these pots. I'm just gonna get my gloves on and then we'll get started. So I'm gonna fill my three centimeter pot with some of my potting on compost. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to make a small hole in the middle there so that there's room for my little seedling to go into. And then it's usually quite easy to get your seedling up out of the seed tray. You can usually just squeeze gently at the bottom and then just put your fingers gently around the base of that stem. And when you're pushing there, or you can also just use a pencil to go up through the drainage hole as well at the bottom, and it should come away fairly easily. If it's not coming away at all and you're feeling some resistance, don't tug at it because you're likely to just snap the seedling and you'll maybe lose that one. So you might need to just see what it is that's making it stick and you might need to get a dibber or a little barbecue skewer or a pencil to just try and get underneath it to get it out. But let's see if we can get one just now fairly easily. So I'm just squeezing the bottom and I picked one up there. That one came out really quite easily. And you can see there that it's got lots of lovely roots around it now, and there's roots just coming away at the bottom. So that'll grow on really well in our pot. And it should just slot into the hole that I've made there, which it does. And then you might just need a little bit of extra potting on compost to put around the base of it. And then just press in gently with your fingers so that it's nice and sturdy in the center of your pot. And then what you want to do then is you want to give it a little water in and let that drain away. And then you can just place that in your seed tray or on your staging in your greenhouse and let it grow away for the next few weeks. Come in and check it regularly. Make sure that the soil hasn't dried out. Give it a water if it is looking dry. And also make sure that your greenhouse is ventilated during the day as well. If you've got vents and things, open them up, let the air circulate because that helps the plant as well and it just stops um, the atmosphere getting too humid and hot in the greenhouse. And the little plants, they like to let get brushed as well. You can run your fingers over the top of them. This just stimulates what it would be like if there was a breeze outside so they don't get as much of a shock when they do go outside and get planted in your garden. So over here in the greenhouse, you can see lots of different flowers that I have potted on already. So we've got some larkspur here that have gone into their three centimeter pots. Um, we've got some salvia here as well. And then up here, we have got some gypsophila that I've already done. Over here, we've got corn flowers. There's some flocks in these pots here. So they're all going to be finding it much easier to grow now. They've got space and room to spread out. They're gonna have nice water and they'll grow away really well for the next couple of weeks and then I'll start hardening them off. So for potting on my little seedlings that I've just germinated in the seed tray, I have just filled my 82 cell tray with my potting on compost and it's dry at the moment. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna get my tray that comes with it and I'm gonna pop this underneath and I'm gonna fill the tray with water. And that's just gonna soak up through the compost from underneath and make it nice and damp for transplanting my seedlings into. Now that's a little bit different from what I did before. So when I was potting on my gypsophila a minute ago, 
that was coming out of the cell trays in it, it was a larger plant, I did water with a watering can. So the soil was dry when I put it into my pot and then I used a watering can to um, water it afterwards. And that is because the plant is more robust now. It can cope with having some water on it. And I still didn't water over the top of the leaves. I just watered round the base. But I don't want to water on top of my tiny little baby seedlings that I'm gonna put into this 82 cell tray. They're very small and I don't want to risk any damping off or anything by putting water over the top of the leaves there. So that's why at an early stage with first potting on, I will water from underneath and then with second potting on, I can use a watering can. So I'm just going to take my watering can just now and I'm just going to fill up that seed tray underneath and then the water will soak up into that. So for this next bit of potting on, we have got our 82 cell tray here, all nice and damp from having soaked up that water from underneath. And the other thing I've got with me is I have got a bamboo skewer that you can just buy for barbecues in the supermarket. And I find these really useful for just teasing gently underneath in the seed tray to get the little seedlings out. And you can use other things, you can use your fingers, you can use a pencil, just whatever works for you. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my bamboo skewer and I'm just going to tease very gently underneath the soil surrounding the little seedlings in the seed tray. And you should see that the soil just starts to break up a little bit and you should see that the little seedlings are starting to move a little bit more easily. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the little seedling by its seed leaves. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that in a minute. I'll show you closer up. I'm just gonna tease underneath. So here we go, here is a little seedling out of the seed tray and I'll show you a bit closer. So it's got a lovely nice root system on it, so it's growing really well. And up at the top here, I have held onto these rounded leaves. So there's two at the base of the plant that are rounded leaves and these are the seed leaves, the first ones that come out when the plant is growing. And then the other ones that have the serrated edge here are the true leaves which are coming and will form the plant. So I don't want to touch those because that means that I could damage them, but I do want to hold it by the seed leaves. And I don't want to hold it by the stem because if I hold it by the stem, that is very fragile and could snap really easily and we could lose our little seedling. So hold it by the seed leaves to take it out of the seed tray and then you can pop it into its new home. So I just make a little hole, just like we did when putting on the larger seedlings into my seed compost. And then I'm gonna take over my little seedling and I'm just gonna use the bamboo skewer to show the roots where to go and to press them gently down into the soil. So very gently, so you're not damaging the plant. And then I can just use my fingers to press around it so that it's in the seed tray nicely there. So I'll show you that closer up. So here is our little scabious seedling in its new home and I can just show you here. So this is what a seed leaf looks like. So it is the rounded ones that I held when I took it out the seed tray. And this one over here with the serrated edge is a true leaf and the ones coming down there, they are true leaves as well. So those are the ones that I didn't want to hold because I didn't want to damage those new parts of the plant. So let's see if we can find another one here. So let's just make a hole with our skewer for our next little seedling to go into. You can see it's nice and damp in there. And then over here, we're just gonna tease again underneath with our bamboo skewer. And you can see these ones here have lifted up. And then I am going to just identify which is the seed leaves on here. So I can see it there. And I'm very gently gonna just pull up. And you can see there, that I've managed to get the plant out intact and it's got lovely roots at the bottom and I'm holding it by those seed leaves and not the new true ones. So here's our scabious all potted up in our seed tray and you can see that some are larger than others. That's just what happens when a tray germinates. Some will get bigger quicker, but the others will catch up now that they've got lots of room to grow in the cell tray. 
the compost is nice and damp so they can grow away. I don't need to water them again because of the compost is damp and watered from underneath. I just need to watch them over the next few days and if it does dry out then I will add water to that bottom tray to soak up um, and I'll keep doing that until they're ready to pot on into larger pots. These seedlings are all a really nice size to pot on. They hadn't got too big, they hadn't got leggy, so they could go in the cell tray fine. But if you did have really leggy seedlings, they've gone just a bit too far in the greenhouse after germinating, then I wouldn't recommend um, potting them on into a cell tray or even the two centimetre pots, because what you're wanting to do then is rescue them and bury the stem. And I don't think that in a cell tray or in the two centimetre pot, you'd have enough room there to bury the stem. So you might be looking at potting them on into larger pots like the three centimetre ones. But if you do have leggy seedlings, then go and have a look at my rescuing leggy seedlings video from a few weeks ago and you'll see what we did with them then. And the leggy seedlings definitely grow away fine because this is them hardening off outside and you can see that they are now huge and that they're starting to get buds on them as well. And these are going to get planted out in the garden in the next few days once they've had enough of a hardening off period. But they definitely came on really well after we rescued them that time. So definitely have a look back at the leggy seedlings video if that's what you have got at the moment at home and see what to do with them. So one of the questions that I've been asked is how do I water my seedlings in the greenhouse at the different stages that they're at? So I've got a few different watering cans here. My largest watering can is a 10 litre watering can and I do use this a lot when plants are much larger. I've got pots and containers outside that need watering but at the moment I've taken the rose end off of it and the only time I use this at the moment is I fill this up from my water butts outside and I use this to pour water into the trays that go underneath those 82 cells so they need quite a lot of water when it does come to watering time and this is quite an easy way to fill the different ones up as I go along so I just lift the seed trays up a little bit and then put the water into the tray underneath and then I have smaller watering cans so this one is just a small greenhouse one and again I haven't got a rose on the end of it and that is what I use when I am watering my newly potted up seedlings. So this is a salvia one here and I would just water around the base of it. So that's my general advice. Here in Scotland, I do have problems with damping off, especially earlier in the year when it's not warm weather and it's cold and it's damp and the atmosphere is just not that ideal for starting off seeds. So I do tend to do no overwatering on the leaves if I can help at all. I water in those trays from underneath. Same for putting my seeds on. So seeds that are sown, they get watered from underneath in these trays. And little seedlings on their first potting on, they get watered from underneath in the trays. And then it is only when they start to get bigger on a second potting on or their larger plants that I've bought in that I will use a watering can just to water around the base in the flower pot. So thanks for watching today. I hope it was helpful just answering a few questions that you've had in the last few weeks. And keep them coming in because it is really great to have your questions. We're moving into May now, which is always a transition period in the garden because it's that time when the spring flowering bulbs, they all start to finish and then you just get the perennials starting to come out and then the hardy annuals will start putting on their show. So it's an exciting time, but it's also a very busy time because there's so much going on. So I'm going to be seed sowing, I'm going to be potting on, I'm going to be hardening off, I'm going to be planting things out in the garden, the season's going to be moving on. At the end of the month we should start to get the hardy annuals coming in um, and we also should be able to maybe get some sweet peas flowering if we're lucky. So in Scotland it tends to be very much towards the end of May, beginning in June that these hardy annuals and sweet peas flower for me outside but it all depends on the weather, it depends what kind of a May we're going to have. I'm going to have a look at chrysanthemum cuttings in a video next week because if you've got any parent plants that you've stored over the winter and you've potted up and started watering now they should be coming back into growth and you can take cuttings from these and this will produce new plants for this season so we'll have a look at that as well. My dahlias are really getting going now I'm starting to see lots of shoots on them that are potted up here in the greenhouse they're all in here keeping nice and protected from those early morning frosts that we're still having. If you'd like to find out more about potting up dahlias I did a video last year about this and if you have a look on the dahlia playlist you'll be able to find it on my channel. 
and also we'll be having a look at pinching out as well. I've done a few videos on different things that you can pinch out like dahlias and cosmos but we'll have a look at are there any other flowers that you can pinch out for bushier plants with more blooms in the summer. So we'll look at that as well and if you've got any other topics that you'd like covered please do get in touch.